is a ReTV documentary. Before we get into it, if you haven't watched the trailer for my exclusive series on my website yet, you won't know that Justin Bieber and Miley Cyrus have the same face. Not only that, their parents also have the same faces. Check out the 20 minute trailer on my exclusive series if you want to know why. Did the Fresno PD kill this man? You tell me. Here on YouTube is a channel with now over 2.1 million views called Lang Marine. On this channel are 17 videos posted between March of 2015 and January of 2016. On the 21st of March 2015, the first video was posted. This video was titled Fresno LE harassment, Ford crew cab that stalked me at my residence numerous times. The first paragraph in the description for this video reads, Fresno LE harassment, Ford crew cab that stalked me at my residence numerous times on the 13th of December 2014. This truck, belonging to Fresno sheriff personnel, was stalking me that Saturday morning on the 13th of December 2014. Truck is visible in time frames 14.02.38 and 14.08.00. Five minutes after this incident, I received a hang up call from this number 559 389 0357. The owner of this phone number is a member of the Fresno Sheriff's Office. The second paragraph in the description reads, I am being targeted by multiple City of Fresno departments and the Fresno Sheriff's Office for comments I made on the Fresno Bee from 2009 to 2013. Comments that were critical of the way Fresno PD and Fresno Fire utilised their budgets. My discus handle during that time was John21. Posters on the Fresno Bee using the then discus comment system were supposed to be anonymous. However, Fresno B employee Jody Murray shared Fresno B log data and IP address information with Jared L. McCormick, a Fresno Sheriff Sergeant, who then used the Fresno B provided information to retrieve the name and address information in order to maliciously track down, stalk, and harass Fresno B comment posters, including myself. McCormick's discus handle on the B was Hiker Dude 1967. I notified Jim Boren, the then Fresno B editor via email on two occasions in 2013 regarding an employee at the B who was sharing website IP and log data of Fresno B commenters with Fresno PD and Fresno Sheriff personnel. I explained in these emails that as a result of Jody Murray's nefarious efforts, Fresno B commenters were subsequently stalked and harassed by Fresno law enforcement. I never received a reply from Mr. Boren on either occasion. However, consequently, I have been made a constant target of harassment, intimidation and worse by multiple City of Fresno departments and the Fresno Sheriff's Office. Here's a link to how my problems with the Fresno LE started. And then there's a link to www.jodymurray.com. When I went to this link, this happened. And when I tried on Safari, it just jumped around random spam or virus pages. I also went to a web archiving website to see if an earlier version of the page had been saved, but it hadn't. But feel free to try some of the others and let me know if you find an archived version of that site. The second video was uploaded on the same day and titled Fresno LE conditioning my dogs and neighbours dogs at 11.30pm. 
the first paragraph in the description for this video reads, Fresno Sheriff personnel and canine conditioning my dogs and neighbors' dogs for submission and dominance so they may illegally access my home and property when I am not home. Fresno PD fails to fully investigate my complaint on this incident, which I fully detailed in my Fresno PD internal affairs complaint. And then the same second paragraph as in the last video's description. I am being targeted by multiple City of Fresno departments and the Fresno Sheriff's Office for comments I made on the Fresno Bee from 2009 to 2013, blah, blah, blah. Here's a link to how my problem started. The same link that I tried that no longer works. The third and final video that this account posted on that day was titled 20 minute gap in my Palco front camera, remote inside hack by Fresno LE. The first paragraph of the description for this video reads, 20 minute gap in my Palco front camera. As I approach my driveway from Van Ness Avenue, suddenly my front camera starts recording again. You can see the camera stops recording at time frame 17.11.54 and in brackets military time for 5.11.54. Okay, I have to stop there. That's not military time, that's just time. You know, 24 hours in the day? There's nothing military about telling the time correctly. Anyway, and then restarts at 17.31.02. Remote or inside hack by Fresno LE. And the second paragraph reads the same as the first two videos. Less than a week after these videos were posted, the then Fresno Deputy Police Chief Keith Foster and five others were arrested on drug charges. He was convicted in 2016 for conspiracy to traffic heroin and marijuana and sentenced to four years in prison. He apparently got out in 2020. Coincidence? Nah, more likely it was just Fresno's turn to hit the global lamestream media. Uh, and uh, again, we're grateful to have Chief Dyer here and we want to give him an opportunity uh, to address you as well. Chief. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've, uh, I've been briefed uh, in detail by the FBI as well as the uh, U.S. Attorney and ATF regarding the details of this case. And uh, I really um, at a, am at a loss for words, quite frankly, other than to say that uh, as the police chief, I'm extremely shocked and disappointed at what has uh, occurred with the arrest of uh, Deputy Chief Keith Foster. The next video came nearly a month later on the 16th of April 2015 and was titled Thermal Imaging Threat and Intimidation by Fresno Law Enforcement. The description reads, this is the same Fresno, California sheriff crew that has been illegally entering my property and home when I leave my house. Here they are using an infrared thermal imager to see if I am at home. They then phone a waiting second party with information as to whether I am home or not. Fresno PD fails to fully investigate my complaint on this incident, which I fully detailed in my Fresno PD internal affairs complaint. If anyone can identify any of the Fresno Sheriff personnel in this video, please forward their names. And again, the same second paragraph as in the prior videos. And this video appears to show exactly what the description states. People aiming some kind of recording or infrared imaging equipment at this guy's home. On the 8th of May 2015, another video was posted titled Fresno Ellie Harassment multiple bogus investigations to justify harassing and stalking me. The description for this video reads, undercover Fresno Sheriff's personnel or associate checks my driveway, then texts the second party on his cell phone. These guys desperately want to know whether I am at home so they may gain illegal access to my property and home. Fresno PD fails to fully investigate my complaint on this incident which I fully detailed in my Fresno PD internal affairs complaint. If anyone can identify this Fresno Sheriff's personnel or associate, please forward the name. And as with all the other videos, the same second paragraph and web address. Two days later, on the 10th of May 2015, another video posted titled 
2 a.m. wake up call by Fresno PD and Fresno Fire, JHO, and in brackets, joint harassment operation. And the first paragraph of the description reads, Sunday morning, the 10th of May, 2015, 2.10 a.m. A little over a week after the conclusion of my Fresno Police Internal Affairs complaint, I received an early morning wake-up call by Fresno PD and Fresno Fire. Multiple cop cars come flying past my house with no flashing lights but sirens blazing. Once at the corner, the cop cars turn their sirens off. Apparently, there is no real emergency. The fire truck didn't turn on his siren until he was directly in front of my house, then turned it off seconds later. The sound was so loud I nearly jumped out of bed. My ears were ringing still the next day. I've never heard a fire truck siren that loud before. The cop cars are going too fast to see in the video. All you can see is a light blur from headlights and tail lights. But the fire truck can clearly be seen beginning in time frame 2.13.32. There is no audio, but neighbours confirmed my findings. And the second paragraph for this video reads the same as the previous videos. Another three days later, on the 13th of May 2015, another video is posted titled Fresno PD and Fresno Sheriff's Informants, George and Maxine Ramirez, of Fresno committing crimes. The description reads, Update, I have recently learned that George Adams Ramirez is a registered sex offender and very recently had contact with Fresno Sheriff Sergeant Jared L. McCormick. False imprisonment and conspiracy to illegally enter my home. At approximately 8.13pm on the 11th of April 2015, George and Maxine Ramirez, my neighbours, who reside at 656 North Van Ness Avenue, Fresno, California, N3728, invite me over to their house. After an hour and a half or so, I start to get unexpectedly uncomfortable. Quickly, I stand up from sitting on the couch and explain that I need to leave because I believe I lost my wallet. As I walk towards the door, Maxine Ramirez immediately blocks my path to the front door and puts her hands up and said, No, you can't leave. Just sit down. I replied, Maxine, please don't block me. As I move past Maxine and move towards the front door, Maxine yells, George! At this point, my flight or fight response kicks in. As I made my way out of the front door towards the front yard gate, George, who heard Maxine's call, rushed towards the front yard gate. I can clearly be seen in the video trying to find a way over the fence and back into my own yard as George, a larger man who is a Vietnam vet, blocks my access to the front gate. He pretends to be unlocking the gate, but in reality he's blocking and interfering with my access to exit his property. I finally find a safe exit and hop the fence to the left of the front gate. George then quickly comes through the gate and relentlessly follows me. As I am finally able to move to my own property and unlock my driveway gate, George and Maxine crowd and hover over me. I keep telling them to get back in and give me some goddamn room. They would not step back and they kept insisting that I get back into their house. In order to get away from them, I moved to my small front yard gate where George continues to follow me. George kept yelling my name very loudly numerous times, which at the time seemed to serve no purpose, yet it was quite alarming. Later, I realised George was trying to signal an associate or affiliate with the Fresno PD or the Sheriff's Department who had illegally entered my house. And George and Maxine's job was to keep me at their property for as long as possible. No other explanation was plausible for the circumstances presented. And later, as I discovered, my front door lock, my printer and two computers had been clearly tampered with. I believe one of the perpetrators who entered my home was Eli Rodriguez, likely a fake name, who was a Fresno Sheriff employee working with the Ramirez's to illegally enter my property and home. Although the name Eli Rodriguez is likely a fake name, 
His phone number, 559-458-6774, is correct. He is the same individual who dropped off an outboard motor at my marine repair shop a month earlier with the intent of framing me on the previously described two-stroke illegal sticker scam. He drove a mid-90s dark blue GMC Jimmy, or Chevy Blazer. He also had a young German Shepherd dog in the back of his vehicle. The Ramirez's, along with their corrupt police associates, conspired illegally to set me up for any crime that they could conceive or contrive. As a result, I have, with predictive and unsatisfactory results, filed complaints directly to the Fresno PD Internal Affairs Department, a complete waste of time, the FBI, and the US Department of Justice. Apparently, my unexpected early departure from the Ramirez house jammed up the time schedule of illegal entry and the far and wide conspiracy by Fresno PD and the Fresno Sheriff's Office to plant false evidence in my home. In addition to the above incident, every time I open my gate and pull out of my driveway, George and Maxine call their contacts in Fresno law enforcement to notify them that I am leaving my home. Within minutes, I have a police tale and I am being followed. Throughout my short trips to the grocery or hardware store, I cross paths with three or four marked Fresno PD cruisers. Some of the cruisers follow me. Some pull right up next to me. And then part of the second paragraph from the other videos. Consequently, I have been made a constant target by multiple City of Fresno departments and the Fresno Sheriff's Office. And this time, no link to Jody Murray's website. Two days later... On the 15th of May 2015, another video was posted titled Fresno PD Harassment and Intimidation After Filing Internal Affairs Complaint with Fresno PD. The description for this video reads, Less than two weeks after concluding a police harassment complaint with the Fresno PD Internal Affairs Department via Richard Rasmussen's Office of Independent Review, I was the lucky recipient of yet another episode in the show of force and intimidation by Fresno PD. Fresno PD boldly and arrogantly posted up in gang formation directly across the street from my home to send me yet another Fresno PD signature message. No, not to protect and serve, but a new and more modern slogan for the current times. You file a complaint and we will retaliate. No, I've got a better one. If you make a complaint, we'll show no restraint. Thank you, Richard Rasmussen. I also filed a parallel complaint with Fresno Mayor Ashley Swearingen's... Swearingen's... Swearingen's? <laughs> They're taking the piss with that one. Anyway, with Ashley someone's office, but her response was never received. Perhaps Mrs. Swearingen... Swearingen is nothing more than fruit from the poisonous tree. And then the same second paragraph as the other videos. A week later, on the 23rd of May 2015, another video posted titled The 22nd of May 2015, 4.45am, Trespassing and Attempted Vehicular Burglary of My Vehicles. The description reads, On the 22nd of May 2015, my security light above my driveway burnt out and some guy entered my property at about 4.45am in the morning. That's what AM is. Luckily, I had my two vehicles locked, so he wasn't able to get into my vehicles. He possibly has a thin light beard and or a goatee. If anyone recognises this guy, please let me know. He may also be an associate of George and Maxine Ramirez who live next door to me. Likely he lives in the South Tower area, which is where I live. Thank you. There were no more videos posted for just over three months, but on the 2nd of September 2015, a video with just a website link to a Fresno Bee article as the title was posted. The article reads, Robert J. Thompson, Unreasonable traffic fines violate constitutional rights and is about charging fees and fines to drivers contesting traffic tickets. If you want to read the article, pause the video. The description for this video reads, Targeted again for posting on the Fresno B. Great article, Robert. But I've been saying this since 2009 when I discovered law enforcement agencies in Fresno were scanning license plates in retail parking lots of Save Mart, Vons, Home Depot and others looking for expired tags and other small infractions. 
Fresno cops would set up a sting where the unsuspecting shopper would be pulled over two or three blocks from where they were shopping so they would have no clue that their vehicle was actually scanned in a private parking lot. I brought this to the attention of the mayor's office and Fresno PD in 2009 and later. They then figured out where I lived and started harassing and following me everywhere, and worse. To this day, I am on their bad guy slash troublemaker slash whistleblower list and I feel their presence constantly. In the wake of the abuses of the tickets and fines epidemic discovered by the US Justice Department in Missouri, other states, including Missouri, now limit the amount of income a town can collect from traffic tickets, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures. Arkansas and Missouri cap the overall percentage of a town's budget gleaned from state and federal highways at 30 and 35% respectively. New York State prohibits the town's ticket revenue from exceeding the equivalent of $5 per resident, with any excess going to the state's general fund. Other states appear to be joining the mix. Oklahoma can strip the ticketing powers on state and federal highways from a town that has generated more than 50% of its revenue from traffic fines. Vermont and Louisiana are among other states that have introduced similar legislation. This might be a great idea for California as well. And then some text that makes it appear that this text was copied from another post. Like, reply 3, 24th of August 2015 at 9.05pm, Mac McCauley. I'm sure Fresno PD has nothing better to do than follow you around all day, but to your larger point, I think you are on the right track, but we will not see that here. There's too much money to be soaked from the public fund on ever-increasing government. Like, reply 1, 25th of August 2015, 4.47am. John Lang, works at Self-Employed. Mac McCauley, nothing better to do? No less than eight hours after I commented on here, the Fresno B, there is a Fresno PD canine unit parked right in front of my house. This has been my life for the past five years. Here is the video. And then a link to this video. As soon as I start to zoom in, he speeds off. The number on top of the unit appears to be 322. I think Fresno PD and the FSO want to make me the next Sandra Bland. They want to make you a black female? Just over three weeks later, on the 28th of September 2015, another video titled Eli Rodriguez is the Fresno Sheriff's personnel who conspired to set me up for a false arrest. The description for this video reads, Eli Rodriguez is the Fresno Sheriff's personnel who was going to set me up on the jet ski emissions scam. He dropped off a two-stroke Evin Rude motor at my shop on the 2nd of March 2015. His plan was to drop off the motor then at a later time enter my property with the assistance of George and Maxine Ramirez, my neighbours, who were placed there by Fresno law enforcement personnel. Plant evidence, then pick up the engine at a later time and lie and say I was trying to sell him fake emission stickers. Then he would falsely arrest me. I knew something was amiss on these emission stickers because I was receiving a ridiculous amount of calls on them. And curiously, Tim Thompson, of the Fresno Wastewater Division, who has numerous close relationships with Fresno law enforcement personnel, had sent me a boat repair referral who, without warning, sent me an illegal emission sticker directly to my cell phone during a discussion about a boat repair. Eli Rodriguez is one of the main players in this Fresno law enforcement conspiracy to enter my property to set me up and plant false evidence while I was away from my home. He either directly participated in entering my property via law enforcement grade jiggler keys or lock picks, or he knows the other Fresno LE personnel who entered my home. This explains the extreme surveillance I was under including, but not limited to, moving George and Maxine Ramirez into the property right next to me. This would give them very acute windows of opportunity and time frames so they could comfortably access my property without being detected. However, they made some mistakes. Eli Rodriguez may be an alias, but the guy in this video, 
with the pictured vehicle and canine in the back of the vehicle is the person who dropped off the engine and provided information on the repair tag. As Eli Rodriguez with the phone number 559-458-6774, the phone number is accurate because he contacted me numerous times via that number after dropping off his motor. This one guy, Eli Rodriguez, knows all the details of every crime Fresno PD and the Fresno Sheriff's Office have committed regarding my harassment and conspiracy case. When this guy cracks, and I'm sure he will because this guy is a risk taker, and as a result, he is already on the radar of federal law enforcement. He is one of major players of a rogue underground crew of local corrupt and criminal Fresno law enforcement officers. Similar to the recent busted Oakland crew of bad cops called the Rough Riders, this entire case will then blow wide open when the feds get him in for a proper interrogation. He is the keystone piece who can bring 20 to 30 other corrupt Fresno cops down with him. The next video came a month later, on the 25th of October 2015, and was titled, How many Fresno cops does it take to arrest one guy with a teddy bear? The description reads, Fresno cops are so bored and business is so slow that very frequently 10 to 15 Fresno cops show up on a call like this one. Is this why Mayor swearing and swearing and in and is she swearing again? Chief Dyer and Jackie Parks want to continually increase the Fresno PD budget? The false narrative that Fresno needs more cops is simply a fabrication and a fantasy. Collectively, their real goal is to simply expand local government to provide employment opportunities for their friends and family, all at the expense of Fresno taxpayers, and then the same second paragraph as in the first videos. It was just over two months until the next video, on the 14th of January 2016, when the video titled Fresno Law Enforcement Tries a Second Time to Set Me Up. This one is the phone caper. The description for this video reads, Due to YouTube description limitations, the first paragraph of this incident is available at www.jodymurray.com, the same link that no longer works. Fast forward to today, the 13th of January 2016, a day Fresno PD fully expected me to go to work, I did all the usual things I do before I leave for work, which I knew was monitored closely by Fresno law enforcement and their various surveillance schemes and technologies, expertise that Jerry Dyer recently proudly displayed and debuted to Washington Post interviewers. I texted my daughter, wishing her a good day, then I disconnected from the internet as I typically do when I leave for work, then I silently waited monitoring my extensive Palco camera system. Fresno cops knew full well I leave between 7.45 and 8 a.m. every morning. It's no secret that they have been monitoring and harassing me for a very long time. I was stunned to see what I'd seen. In frame 7.48, 10 a.m., a marked Fresno PD vehicle heads north up Van Ness Avenue. At 7.48.54 a.m., another marked Fresno PD cruiser heads north in the same direction. Then, at time frame 7.55, a Fresno PD marked vehicle suddenly appears erratically from an alley on Van Ness, just three doors south from my house. He's apparently in plain view, chasing a guy on a bike. As the person on the bike turns the bike around and steers it back towards the alley, the officer strangely exits the vehicle and begins a foot chase of the guy on the bike. Now, when have you ever seen a Fresno cop chasing a guy on a bike on foot when the cop has a perfectly good vehicle to chase down the suspect? The officer had plenty of time and room to simply place his vehicle in reverse and continue the pursuit back into the alley. Typically, this is what Fresno PD does. Actually, Fresno PD typically runs folk over when pursuing a fleeing bike rider in their vehicles. I think what we are witnessing here is very strange. I think this incident was a completely staged event in plain view to create a guy on a bike slash suspect on the loose condition. So Fresno cops could then create a probable cause condition which would allow the two first Fresno PD cruisers in frame 748.10 to make a guy on a bike probable cause stop. They would have used this ruse to stop me on my bike. 
this would have looked reasonable in the reports given that staged events on Van Ness Avenue near my home. This entire time frame of Fresno PD actively occurred during what typically would have been my window for leaving and riding to work. Coincidence? Absolutely not. Fresno PD has mapped out my entire time frames. I have publicly posted this numerous times to numerous websites and blogs. I believe the first two PD cruisers knowing my path would have pulled me over based on the staged Van Ness Avenue events. Then the cops would have searched me, then revealing the missing phone claiming they found it on my person. This would have led to a search warrant application and then voila, Fresno cops would have planted a treasure trove of items that would ensure my silence for a very long time. Make no mistake, that missing phone was in one of the first two Fresno PD cruisers. I can assure I am no criminal and I certainly would not do anything illegal knowing the acute surveillance I have been under for a long time. So anything Fresno law enforcement finds in my possession, in my vehicles and or property would have to be planted by Fresno PD. A full, more complete text version on details of this video can be viewed at jodymurray.com, the same web address that no longer works. Earlier that same day, early hours of that morning at 12.48am, a Facebook account in the name of John Lang wrote this post. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up, if anything happens to me in the next day or two, it will be the result of Fresno PD, my neighbour, and an employee at my job, Payless Brakes and Tyres on Blackstone. The next day, on the 15th of January 2016, another video posted titled Suspicious Fresno Garbage Truck Activity on Friday the 15th of January 2016. The description for this video reads, My letter and email to the US Department of Justice and various Fresno, California FBI field offices. Sorry to bother you again, but this is urgent. This video shows Fresno garbage trucks stopping in front of my house briefly, yet I have no can out this morning. This incident was preceded by two marked Fresno PD cruisers. I believe the truck stopped in front of my house so as to generate a GPS tracking signal that would imply Fresno garbage trucks picked up garbage at my house this morning. Why? Because Fresno PD planned to plant some of my ex-wife's stolen purse items in my garbage cans. Why is this significant? Because when my ex-wife called me telling me her purse was stolen from her vehicle on the 5th of January 2016, as we discussed the incident, she stated she was going to go around to her neighbourhood and see if any of her stolen purse items were in her neighbour's garbage cans. I even said that's a good idea. Fresno PD would have known this because I have continually stated Fresno Ellie listens in on our phone conversations. This is well documented. Fresno PD plans to distribute my ex-wife's stolen purse items then claim they found them in my garbage cans so they can again make a false arrest. You can plainly see my garbage cans are not out, yet this Fresno garbage truck acts as if it's picking up garbage. Fresno PD continues to try and set me up and destroy me. And then a link to this video. Kind regards, John Lang, Fresno, California 93728. On the same day, another video was posted titled Two Marked Fresno PD Cruisers Preceding Suspicious Garbage Truck Activity Friday the 15th of January 2016. The description is a link to the last video. And again, on the same day, a third video was posted Thank God the Feds are listening and responding. The description reads... After corresponding with the FBI earlier this morning regarding the garbage truck incident, the feds posted up outside my house in plain view this morning. Thank you, USG. That same day, he wrote a Facebook post to Corin Hoggard of ABC30 Action News. Corin, you want some news? Corrupt Fresno cops are going to try and kill me this weekend, possibly tonight. This is no joke. Please follow up on my story regardless of what happens or what version the cops and Fresno B come up with. Please check out www.jodymurray.com and my YouTube site. Thank you. The next day at 7.33pm he made another Facebook post linking his final video. I'm not sure why 
but the Facebook post was on the 16th and the video was posted to YouTube the next day on the 17th. I'm not sure how you can link a video that wasn't posted until the next day, but hey, maybe he deleted it and uploaded it again the next day. The post reads, If I turn up missing or dead tomorrow, remember this van. I think I seen a couple of guys sneak out the side door and into a building when I was parked in the carport this afternoon. I've been causing the city of Fresno a lot of problems recently, which I now regret. Sign on the door said guarantee carpet cleaning Fresno. And at 10.48 that night, he posted, Anyone want to crash at my pad tonight? Must be a legal gun owner. I think the bad guys may come and get me tonight. And somebody responded, What the fuck? And he responded with four comments. Totally serious. Any serious patriots out there? I've seen a couple of guys sneak in the vacant building next to me. I've been under some threats recently because of my activism lately. And then on the next day, on the 17th of January 2016, the final video ever posted to this channel was uploaded. The title was Carpet Cleaning Van 656 Van Ness Avenue, Fresno, California, Today. And the description reads the same as the first post the day before regarding the carpet cleaning company. one-year-old John Lang was found barricaded inside his burning home with stab wounds back in January. He later died at a hospital. Investigators called his death suspicious because it appeared someone intentionally set the fire at the Van Ness home. A coroner later determined the wounds were self-inflicted. Prior to his death, Lang gained social media attention by posting that he feared Fresno police were trying to kill him. Thanks for watching. If you got this far, I actually love you. If you enjoyed the content, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support this channel, smash that subscribe button now. What are you waiting for? A massive thank you to the people who have kindly supported my channel, the official ReTV supporters who sponsor this content. You guys are awesome. Peace. You've been watching a ReTV documentary.